Let's look at Lenz's law now. I put this in ACDC, this is Tesla, and there's Edison, and there we go. Um, so we're going to look at, first of all, Faraday's law, just to remind ourselves. It was the induced EMF. It was equal to minus N delta phi delta T. In other words, uh, this one right here, so the induced EMF was proportional to the rate of change of flux linkage here. So what's Lenz's law now? Well, Lenz's law uh, says that the induced EMF will act in such a way as to oppose the motion. Now, it turns out that's because that's a consequence of uh, energy conservation. But basically, what I like to think of it as this one right here, it opposes the motion. That's essentially like the negative in this equation. That's just the way I sort of try to remember it. So the EMF, well, moving magnetic fields will cause an induced EMF, but the direction of that EMF will be opposite to what you would think. That's sort of like the, the way I try to remember it. So let's look at what I mean by this. So let's just say you have an electromagnet here and you've just got this point one right here. This is just one. Okay, so this is this point number one. And the question will be, hey, what happens if you have a magnet and it comes towards it? Now remember, this magnet has its own magnetic field lines coming from it, but let's just assume it's coming towards it. Now, yes, it will induce, as it's moving, at least as it's moving towards, it will induce an EMF, right? And we can figure out the value of it from Faraday's law. But now I care about the direction. See, what I care about is what's going to happen here. So what's going to happen is, it's really interesting, it will create a north-south combination to oppose this motion. So if you imagine you've got a north coming towards you, what do you want to do? Well, you would want to place a north away from it. Uh, sorry, um, a north coming towards it. In other words, you want to repel it. So this here would repel it. Now let's use uh, right-hand rule number two because that's the one we need to do to figure out things with solenoids. Remember, that's the one where you curl your fingers. The fingers curl in the direction of the current and your thumb tells you the direction of the magnetic field. So because of this, let's see. Um, well, I have to automatically have my thumb to the right because that's north. Because right? your thumb points in the direction the north would point. A north would point away from the north, so it would go to the right. That means my right hand then has to be towards the right. And when I look at the way my fingers are curling, they're curling sort of from the back and towards my face. And then that means they're towards this way. That means the current is going yeah, around this thing and then towards me, and around it and towards me. In other words, the current then is going to be going in this direction. So the current will move to the right. We could say the current moves in a clock, uh, counterclockwise direction. Okay, so now let's look at what happens if it goes away. So as this north is going away from it, it wants to oppose that motion too. So whereas here it's, you know, coming towards it, it's almost like it says, hey, go away. So I'll put a north to have it coming towards it. But now it goes away. It's like, wait, wait, wait. I was just kidding. Come back. So what it'll do, it'll place a south here and a north here. So what that do is that south will want to attract that north. Now let's use our same right hand rule number two. Okay, we'll still use that one. Okay, it's right hand rule number two. And let's see if I do that. Oh, my thumb has to be to the left. And that means now my fingers are curling where they're going out and then back and then towards me and then back so that means it must be in this direction so notice then that this one now is in that direction like this right here so that's i by the way this here is my i right here so now i can say hey the current induced is to the left in other words it's clockwise so wasn't that interesting okay so i want us to consider now a practical application of this which is hydroelectric uh, power um, and that usually, the way that works is usually like you have a, a big lake and then uh, or a river or something like that, and you've put a dam in front of it. That's why I put that dumb joke. What did the fish say when it ran into the wall? <laughs> um, okay, so that's because you have a dam there. And what's the point of that? Well, that you let some of the water flow through that dam, right? So you create a lot of pressure. You create a, a little pipe, for example, for the water to flow. That water is going to turn a wheel. Why? Why do we get power from that? I mean, Canada, for example, where I'm from, we have tons of this hydroelectric power. I mean, that's how uh, we power uh, huge parts of Canada. Um, so w the way this works, essentially, is as you have this wheel that's rotating, because you know, the water is going to be spinning a wheel, on that wheel, you attach magnets, um, so you have magnets that are spinning. So can you imagine then there's just one magnet, you know, that's going to be spinning around. By the way, this is going to be connected to a coil. Now keep in mind, this coil then is connected to, you know, in a 
a village or a town or whatever, or to the U.S., because Canada sells a lot of our electricity to the U.S. But basically, this is the process by which it's made. So step one, let's see. As a magnet is coming towards, so for example here, you've got a north coming towards you. Notice this one right here? Well, it's going to do just like what we talked about before. It's going to induce um, this north or south combination. So what's going to happen is as the north is coming towards you, you say, ooh, I don't want that towards me. So that means it's going to make this north and this south here. So what does that mean? Well, if we look at the way this is, my right hand rule number two, I'll maybe write that down right here. So I'll say right hand rule number two, what happens? I'm going to have my right hand and I'm going to put my thumb, which is a direction of a magnetic field, to the left. That means my fingers are curling from me to the back. That's the way my fingers are curling. So that means they're going to go back and then this way and back. In other words, the current is going to go this way, like this right here. Okay, so what what then? Well, as it keeps spinning, of course, at some point now it's going away. Do you notice? Like now it's going away from it. And Lenz's Law says it's going to oppose that motion. So that means, hey, if there's a north going away from you, it says, wait, come back. So that means it's a north and a south. And if I do that, then let's use my right hand rule again. And I flip my thumb. My thumb is now going to be to the right. My fingers are now curling uh, from the back and over. So that means in this case, they're going to go back and over this and then back and over this. In other words, it's going to be going this way. So I'm going to draw it like this right here. So that means the current then is going to be, um, in this case right here, counterclockwise. But wait, that means, and, as it, and remember, this thing is spinning all the time. Remember, and keep in mind, there'll be a bunch of magnets. Well, as it does that, you've got a current going one way, then it goes the other way, then one way, then it goes the other way, and so on, and so on, and so on. In other words, this current is alternating in its direction. And this is why the current that you generate from this here, from natural you know, sources like this here, is called an alternating current for a reason, right? Because it goes up and down and up and down. And this is why we have AC currents. This is why like, what we actually generate is like this. By the way, this is the case for like not just water, but lots of other things like, for example, um, nuclear power even. It's a really fancy way to just turn a wheel. I mean, you've used the nuclear power. We've got other videos in another unit about it. But uh, this nuclear power, the way it works is you're just using the power of nuclear fission in order to just create heat. And that heat you're using to make steam, that steam is being passed through a pipe, which has a wheel on it, and the wheel turns. And the wheel turns with magnets on it. You attach magnets to that wheel. And then as the wheels are turning, of course, what happens? It creates this alternating current. So this is how we generate electricity. Okay, so let's look at an important fact that what if, like before we had uh, things uh, like the object sitting still and the magnets were moving, this time what if we have a uniform magnetic field? In other words, let's say we have the magnetic field here, for example, into the page. And this time we take a coil of wire and we spin that coil around. Can you imagine it? So it's like, a, it's like some big square and that square is just spinning around like this right here. Well, the same thing is going to happen. It's also going to induce a sinusoidal EMF. Uh, so that means like this graph will also do something like, you know, something like this here. Sinusoidal means, you know, it follows the sine curve, for example. Uh, okay, now let's do an example. So you have a metal rod. This is this rod right here, and it's sitting on some metal wires. That means, in other words, you can, you know, you can induce a current that's going to go one way or another way. And you're sliding it to the left. Let's just say, so this thing here is actually moving to the left. Okay, well, the magnetic field B is directed into the page. There we go. And the question is, which way will the induced current flow? Well, to do this, I'm going to use this Lenz's law, the fact that it's going to oppose the motion. Now, how can you oppose the motion? What's the motion to oppose? The motion you want to oppose is this thing sliding to the left. You want to oppose that. And the way you can do that is by uh, having a force that's to the right. Now, what do we know about forces? Oh, yeah, I have right-hand rule number three. So that's actually the one I'm going to use, right-hand rule number three. So I'll state it again. You want to oppose that leftmost motion. That means you want to oppose it with a force to the right. But wait, if you want to have a force to the right, let's, use, let's think about our right-hand rule here. That means I want to have my palm, which is my force, my palm, which is the force here, I want that to the right. But, uh, because I'm using this hand rule, I've also got my fingers, remember what those represent, fingers, which is B, those are into the page. 
And let's see now, if I do this, so right hand rule because it's a current, I put my palm to the right, my fingers into the page, that means uh, my thumb ends up pointing downwards. And wait a second, if I've got my thumb pointing downwards then, that means at this point right here, the current then goes this way. And keep in mind, it's going to be like a nice flow. So that means actually the whole flow right here, it's actually going to induce this current going clockwise. So can you see this right here? Because the current is actually going to go all the way like this right here. So this right here will be the current. So this might seem a little bit weird, but the key thing to remember is Lenz's law says that the induced current or the induced EMF will be such that it opposes the motion. So then you have to think about like what hand rule, for example, will allow you to oppose the motion. In this case, it was hand rule number three. And the other one, for example, is hand rule number two, where you're creating a north-south on some end of an electromagnet. Whatever works.